me. So today, as you can tell from the title, I'm going to be making a feather fan, a flat fan, whatever you want to call it. I don't know. Um, I originally started out this video idea um, with the intention of providing it as like a tutorial. But um, see, I already got started on the fan and after doing quite a bit of work on it, I realized that I'm not exactly the most knowledgeable about making fans, so why do I think that I can offer you a tutorial? I did do a good amount of research. Um, I don't know anybody personally who makes fans. The only person that I thought I could ask about this, because she makes all other kinds of items, and <laughs> she's like, a designer label in the native world basically and she was like no I don't even make them I actually paid somebody to make mine so I was like well crap I'm turning to the internet then so I looked in all kinds of forums and different places uh, where native people share methods with one another mostly the powwows the powwows.com forums honestly I feel like I found enough information to um, effectively make my own fan because it's just not within my means to be able to pay somebody to make one. Um, in addition, I uh, just like trying my hand at making different items. So instead of doing this video as a tutorial, I'm just kind of doing it vlog style so that um, nobody gets mad at me for telling them how to do something and then it doesn't work out for them. So. Hey, it's future Chelsea with bad skin. Um, I just wanted to pop in real quick because I had filmed instructions on how to do floret feather work and thread work and then I realized that um, that would have made this video a good like half hour longer than it already is right now. So I think what I will do in the future is make separate videos for each floret work and for thread work. Um, but I'll still be showing you how to do, um, how I did the rest of the fan construction and little snippets of, um, clips of me doing the, the floret feather work and the thread work, but it was just, it would have made the video way longer. Um, so look out for those videos in the future and let me know if you even want me to do them. I'll probably do them anyway. And, um, back to the video. The first thing I'm going to do real quick is just kind of go over what kind of materials that I used. Also, if you hear my kids in the background, they're kids, they're loud. I can't make them like stop playing and having fun just because mommy wants to film. So the first item that you need obviously are some feathers. I um, am using eagle feathers. The next thing you're going to need is a fan handle. I got this from a shop called The Wandering Bowl. I'll link them down below. I tried to buy from a shop called Knock Bay. Um, which is a, a shop that's actually local to myself, but they were out of the straight fan handles. They only had the wing kind, and I don't have wing feathers. I wanted a straight fan. Just want to throw this out there. A lot of people talked about using like wooden spoons and then creating a slit in them. Um, that's an option as well. Or you can make your own fan handle, you know? Okay, next thing you're gonna need is a wooden dowel. I got, let's see, what size is this? Uh, 316 size, three out of 16. Um, these are usually really cheap, like not even a dollar. <laughs> you're gonna want some masking tape. Now this next part, a lot of people had a different types of glues that they use. Um, I seen tacky glue was like the number one thing that people like to use um, for floret feather work. Uh, and I typically really don't like tacky glue. So I decided to put my dislike for tacky glue aside and follow some people's advice and it worked for me. So also some Gorilla Glue, some clear Gorilla Glue. And then here's the part where we talk about our creativeness um, and you know this is totally up to you what you want to do. I decided I wanted to do some floret feather work on my fan so I purchased some floret feathers from uh, I believe Crazy Crow. Floret feathers are um, these ones with like the plumage on the bottom and then 
yeah. For doing flat feather work, I also found out that some good hair cut and scissors are needed. Um, and that's because the feathers are like cutting hair, basically. So, um, regular scissors don't work well for that, but you're going to need regular scissors as well anyway. If you don't have good hair cut and scissors, then, you know, just have some nice sharp scissors on you. In addition to florette feather work, I'm also doing thread work. So I got all kinds of threads to do thread work. These are just cotton threads. Um, and then I also have like this holographic shiny thread um this is just like a creative thing pick whatever colors you want and then the the last creative thing i guess is you will need um something to decorate your fan handle i will be using black dyed deer hide um don't know if i'm going to use beadwork on that or whatever yet i'm um i'm gonna decide when i get there and then the last thing that you're going to need is i don't have it right in front of me at the moment but you're going to need some wood filler um not wood glue wood filler uh because the slit here that you put the the fan the feather feathers in <laughs> once you place the feathers in there you can't just glue them you actually need to like fill up the negative space in there so that those feathers are stuck and they don't fall because we don't want them to fall. So the fan that I'm making will be a seven feather fan. I know there's typically fans that have like twice that amount of feathers on them. Um, I guess that's just not what I'm doing. So I already have six of the feathers completed here. You just want to take a look at them. They're not perfect. My florette work isn't you know, I'm not experienced. This is my first time ever doing it. Same thing with the threading. Um, but, you know, unless you're looking closely at it, then I don't think it really matters all that much. All I have now is just one more feather to do. And that's the feather that I'm going to use um, as demonstration for the video. So what I did for all these feathers was I took the very first one that I made and I used that as a reference. I never changed the reference feather um, just because then it would sort of end up like the game of telephone where the, the width of like the, the thread sections would change and I don't want that. And this is the feather that I'm going to be practicing on. Um, I have all the dark colored feathers and then I'll be having two white ones in the middle. Now for this particular feather that we're doing today, because uh, the two white feathers will be in the middle, hi noodles, the two feathers in the middle, the two white ones in the middle, they actually look slightly different from the rest of them and that's just um, to add more accent onto them. So all right, before we get going on that, the very first thing that we need to do is straighten the feathers. So typically feathers, they might have sort of this curve to them and we really want them to be nice and straight. Well, I took a few pictures uh, to show an example of what a straightened feather would look like. I'll link a video in the description that you can go to if you want better instructions on how to straighten a feather. Okay, so I think that this feather looks straight enough. Um, after this, you need to take some sort of uh, weight to stamp onto the feather so that um, it can just kind of like cool off and I don't know, so it can stay. So I just grabbed these random books that my husband got. These, let's see, Home Handyman Encyclopedias and Guides published in New York in 1961. <laughs> I don't know why we have these. I'm just going to let these books rest on this feather. 
Now we're going to cut the dowel and I'm going to use this white feather as a reference for how long to make the dowel. Um, when you're doing all the rest of the feathers, you kind of want to figure out how long it needs to be so that it can stick into the handle and make the feathers, I would say the base of the feathers match. I'm going to go ahead and lay this next to the other one. I'm just going to mark where I think I want to cut it. And then I have just like regular scissors. And I'm going to cut on that mark. Uh, I mean, I'm sure you could use like a razor or something else for this. I'm just kind of like cutting into it all around the dowel. And then snap it. Oh no! There we go. That's the first time that's ever happened where it, it kind of fucked up a little. But it looks fine on this part. I don't know why it did that. It doesn't really matter. Well, the next thing we're going to do is take those same scissors and cut off the end of the quill. If you notice inside of the quill, it's hollow. And that's where we're going to be placing the dowel. Now, these quills are fairly small, but when I was working with these large feathers here, the quills were really big and the dowels, um, they were like smaller than the inside of the quill. So I actually took a little bit of masking tape and just wrapped a little bit around on the, on the side of the dowel that's going inside the quill. And then when I place it in there, it um, basically it thickened up the dowel so that it wouldn't move around inside of the quill. This quill is not that thick though. You can actually place the dowel right in the quill. And then I'm going to... Now you don't want to be doing too much forcing because <laughs> um, you don't want to impact the quill and cause it to split. If you cause it to split, then it'll end up splitting, you know, all the way up. That ain't good. So I think I've gotten it just as far up as I can. Now I'm going to compare it to my other one and see if the bases of the feathers match up. So I have the bases of the feathers here matched up and then I'm going to look at the bottom of the uh, dowel and it's actually not even. So I'm going to mark where to cut and then I'm going to cut that end off. That way the dowels are the same size. On this next part, it might piss off a few fan-making veterans out there. I am not going to be wrapping this in any kind of leather or, you know, like buckskin or whatever people like to use. Typically, what you see is like a white type of leather, um, like a white thin part of the buckskin, and they'll wrap it around, and that's why you see like a white section on most people's fans. I'm just going to take some masking tape and wrap it around. Now I did not come up with the idea of masking tape myself. I will link the video where I got the masking tape idea from. It's, um, it should be the video titled uh, Making Regalia or something like that. He was actually making a bustle and he was actually the one who suggested putting some tape on the dowel before putting it inside the quill. So I'm going to take this tape and I'm going to begin wrapping it around um, probably like right here. The quill stops right here and I'm going to start wrapping about right here. I'm going to kind of start at an angle. I'm just going to hold the plumage, wrap the tape around. And then once I get it all the way around, I'm going to clip it. And 
and then add the tape. Oh, let's see, the tape ends right here. I'm going to just kind of add the tape right before it almost ends. Uh, I know I'm stumbling my words a little bit, <laughs> but um, I hope you get it. This is because I don't want the tape to end up being thicker in some areas and thinner in others. That will not really affect your uh, feather work, but it will affect your thread work. So once I run out, I'll just grab a little bit more. I find it easier to work with smaller sections of tape. If you notice, it kind of changes thickness about right here. And that's where I'm going to line up the next section of tape. As you can see, the tape stops right here. And um, I'm not going to worry about taping the end of the dowel. No reason not to and no reason to. So it's, it's whatever. So for the next part, this is where it gets interesting. This is where you want to design your floret work. So I let this sit here and dry for a little bit and I'm going to get started on the threading portion now. Alright, so I realized that I need to um, cut out the leather that I'm putting on my fan handle before I actually start arranging the feathers with the handle and then <laughs> putting them in there with the wood filler. I have this black dyed uh, deer hide, so I'm going to go ahead and cut it out to size. And then after I place the feathers in with the wood filler, then I will apply this leather to it. Um, and then I also have this little strip that was cut for something else and ended up not being used. And it actually fits like perfectly around the base of this handle. So I think what I'm going to do is um, put this on the base of the handle and then cut fringe off of it so it'll have some like small little leather fringes coming off of it. <laughs> This. <laughs> Isn't this cool? Okay, then I'm going to work on the glue filler, which I have right here. Um, Durham's or whatever, I don't know. 
it was my husband's. He had it. I didn't have to pick it up or anything. So yeah, we'll figure this out. Okay. Grabbed a little medicine dropper here in hopes that this would help me. Just trying to fill up this cavity and then I'm going to stick the feathers into the wood filler. Alright, I think that might be enough for now. And now what I'm going to do is pop in these two very slowly. Okay, so I have the wood filler inside of here and in between all of the feathers. I've kind of fiddled with the feathers to uh, get them in the space that I want them. So now I'm going to put this um, bottom side down on this cutting surface I have here. And I'm going to put this cutting surface up at a space where my kids and my cat can't get to it. But um, another trick I also learned from somebody is to kind of set something on top of these in order to keep them from kind of twisting throughout the night or whatever. Um, some people, they taped them. Um, I'm just going to do this. I think that that's good enough. Maybe I'll do it uh, width way. So I'm setting it on the handle and I'm setting it on the feathers. I'm going to let this sit overnight and then um, meanwhile while it's drying I'm going to think about how I'm going to decorate the black hide that's going to be covering the handle because I don't want it to just be plain old black hide. I think I might do some just a little bit of beadwork. Uh, nothing too extravagant. So, good night. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye bye. Okay, thanks. Okay, love you. Okay, thanks. Okay, here's the moment of truth. Okay. See, I've never worked with wood filler before. Wow. The only thing. The only complaint that I have is I was a little too messy in between the dolly or the doyles, doilies, oh my goodness, it's too early, I can't even speak. And I got some like wood filler on the sides of this here. It's just a little bit of wood filler and it looks like it will, um, I can like pick it off. giant like holy shit I think it's just because I um I spread them out really far and they're not like they're still kind of wanting to so two days two days after I started um filming and I have the completed fan here um we already looked at that yesterday I still need to work on getting the feathers straighter um but for now I'm going to work on um, decorating the fan handle. So I spent all day yesterday working on this. Um, it's just some beadwork. I used my four colors and some rhinestone banding and then attached it to um, the leather. I meant to have seven stars and ended up with eight. Don't know how I did that anyway. Um, so this is going to go on the front. And then we'll have this piece on the back and then I have this piece here that I'm going to put on the bottom for fringing. Um, now what I want to do is have these kind of, see this is where the fan handle is. So these are going to be a little higher. And then I have some pinking scissors here and I'm going to go ahead and cut like little zigzags at the top. And then I went ahead and grabbed some paint brushes that I don't really care about. <laughs> and um, that way I can spread this Gorilla Glue 
um, evenly around the fan handle in order to um, get a nice clean bond between the leather and the wood. So I'm just going to go ahead and piece these uh, leather edges. Is a, a rubber band. Um, that way, when I glue the leather onto the fan handle, I'll um, use a couple rubber bands to wrap around there and keep the leather in place because Gorilla Glue doesn't exactly dry that quickly. Okay, so I just spent a while getting the front part um, glued to the fan handle. Gorilla Glue states that you need to have uh, whatever you're bonding like clamped together for at least two hours. So I'm going to let this sit here for a few hours and then I'll take all the rubber bands off and put the back on. See you in a bit. Okay, so it's been, I think like three and a half hours it's been a while a lot longer than two hours so i'm going to take these rubber bands off in fact the the bottom portion here this has been on much longer probably like four and a half hours so all right so as you can see i took all the rubber bands off and the gorilla glue worked out just fine for getting um that curved glued <laughs> and it looks really nice um so after this i'm just going to take the back and then i'll glue that on now the same as before i'm going to put rubber bands on there and the leather pieces met up nicely and then i'm going to let it sit for a few hours and here it is and then the next thing i'm going to do is just cut the fringe on that bottom piece and keep my feathers away from my cat <laughs> anyway, um, I did not like the way that my feathers looked. I could not get them straight. So, like, I don't know if you remember or if I even said it in the video. It was days ago. I literally don't remember if I said it. I was like, well, I'm just going to put the fan together and then I'll worry about straightening the feathers after that. I just wanted to get the fan together so that it could sit overnight and the wood filler would set, right? Well, I couldn't get the feathers to stay straight. Um, I even tweeted something out like, hey people, what's your tips and tricks on straightening feathers? And I tried a couple of the recommendations and it just, it was not working for me. And so my friend seen uh, my tweet and he ended up giving me a call and we talked on the phone. I showed him the fan and he was like, oh, like, can you move the feathers? I'm like, no, they're heavy set in there. He's like, oh, I would have put the, the feathers on one side on the other side and vice versa, right? And when I tell you, when after he said that and like, okay, we got off the phone after talking for a little bit. And I sat there thinking about what he said. I was like, oh my god, I wish I would have called him or talked to him before doing the wood filler because he is so right. I placed the feathers in a way where their curl, the curl of their quill would go um, outward, right? And I, I did that because... And each section of the feather, one side is um, not as wide as the other side of the quill. And I wanted the wider portion 
to be on the outside of the fan and for some reason I was just so set on that and I just thought you know I'll, I'll just straighten the feathers and make them straight so when I arranged them I was like okay yeah this will make total sense when these feathers are straight and it would have but I couldn't get the feathers straight and then I realized like after thinking about what he said like if the curl of the quill curls inward instead of outward then it actually makes sense so I couldn't move the dowels around because of the wood filler I even tried taking I think I still have it yeah right here I even tried taking a drill <laughs> a big like power tool drill and drilling the wood filler and um, it just didn't work. I couldn't get deep enough. My husband tried using an actual like drill gun with a, a longer bit. And I'm just like, I told him like, you know what? This isn't going to work. The only thing that I think I can do is rip up <laughs> the florette work. I should have asked if y'all were sitting down first. Rip up the florette work remove the feathers from the dowels and then start over on the florette work so that's exactly what i did i removed the florette work and then switched up the feathers so that they um, were arranged in a shape that i like i saved most of the thread work um, so now what I had to do, like even though this fan would have been done yesterday had I arranged the feathers appropriately to begin with, now what I have to do is tape the feathers back onto the dowels and then redo the, the feather work and just um, like this one section of the thread work. Hopefully that's possible, but um... You know, I just, it sucks, but I would rather go through the extra work right now than walk around the powwow with like a dumb looking fan. <laughs> so, um. Much later that the old narrator got tired of waiting and they had to hire a new one. Are you ready? Are you ready? She is finally done. So I really did take all the feathers, not all of them. I think only one didn't come off, but I took most of the feathers off of the dowels after ripping up like this floret work. And then I redid all of the floret feather work. And then I redid um, these portions of the thread work, which was really difficult. I had to um, thread the thread into a needle and then I had to like hold it and then pop the needle through like the gaps between the feathers and then you know like very slowly wrap it around and um I guess because I had to re like take off the feathers and reattach them to the dowels there's a little bit of inconsistencies in like the um the levels I still had to snip off the extra threads here don't mind that um, but from far away, you know, you really can't tell, I don't think. And I kind of don't care. Like, I really like it. And I'm very proud of myself. I made my first fan. I know everything that I need to know for any subsequent fans that I might make. Um, and yeah, I hope you like it. I need to either make or get a case for it probably learn how to make one anyway um and i'll be using it in my first powwow this weekend it's a virtual powwow don't worry um and yeah so i hope you liked this video i hope it was helpful and or entertaining and i'll see you on the next one bama peak guapman